And the, techno the word technology is important because if you just think of it as a drug, um, then it doesn't really capture what DMT is doing. Sure. If, if you take seriously the idea that it allows you to communicate with some kind of normally hidden, unseen, discarnate, intelligent agent, mm -hmm. that feels more like yeah. a molecular communication technology than a drug to me. And once you shift your mindset in that way from drug, or psychedelic drug to technology, then you start to think, well, what's the best way to use this technology? And DMTX, as I said, I think is just the next iteration. But we can... I think we can uh, we can go further than that, mm. right? So we know since the 1950s, um, psychiatrists and physicians and pharmacologists have been drawing blood from people and collecting pea samples and finding DMT in humans. Mm -hmm. But no one really knows what it does. Um, there are hypotheses, but no one's 100% clear why it's in the human body. But at least <laughs> we know that the human body can produce, yeah. manufacture DMT, mm -hmm. and at significant quantities. All the machinery is there. Um, so I was just towards the end of writing Death by Astonishment, getting to the very final chapter, and I was thinking about the future. You know, what does, what does using the DMT technology look like in 10, 20 years? Are we still hooking people up to infusion machines and pumping them with DMT over long periods? Or can we somehow hack the brain's endogenous DMT system? So we, we, we move away from the, the plant world, you know, which was going on for thousands of years, and we move away from laboratory synthesized DMT, and we, and we finally reach the stage where we're actually using our own DMT production laboratory in our own brains. Mm -hmm. um, so rather than injecting someone with DMT, you would simply, by understanding the regulatory mechanisms that control DMT production in, in the human brain, we might be able to actually stimulate the production of DMT and mm. induce people into the DMT state without giving them any DMT. I wonder if there was like some specific music you could play could like vibrate our fucking atoms into creating pumping out more dmt how cool would that be well that's one idea i'm not sure it would work you'd need to flesh that out a bit for me well, um, the, ancient but... greeks, the ancient greeks used music for medicine and they used it for rituals and uh a lot of people think that music in ancient times and antiquity wasn't even recreational they thought that it was uh purely medicinal and for attaining transcendent transcendent experiences for religious rites and uh medicine i mean i think uh, music predates language yes um and early language would have been singing um making noises to them to generate music and that eventually we worked out i guess that you can generate more well, we can make money from it meaning. you can make you <laughs> can make money from it yeah and that's where we are now <laughs> yeah. but alternatively if the music thing doesn't pan out um you can we know now that well way back so 50 years ago um there was a study that's been forgotten about that showed that in mammalian brain in rabbit brain first of all but also in human cerebrospinal fluid there is this peptide that we all have um, that inhibits um, an enzyme called indolethylamine n methyltransferase which is the key enzyme that produces dmt so it converts tryptamine to dmt oh right so, so DMT is manufactured in the body from tryptophan, which is an amino acid. So tryptophan is decarboxylated. That's a very simple process. You remove the carbon dioxide molecule and you mm -hmm. get tryptamine. Then you add two methyl groups, so two CH3 groups, mm -hmm. and that gives you DMT. Very easy to make. And we all have this enzyme, indolethylamine n methyltransferase INMT, in us. It's in basically everywhere in the body, in all cells, basically. Um, so what they discovered in, I think, 1976, that we all have a peptide that binds to indol INMT and basically puts the brakes on DMT production. So it keeps DMT production at a very low level. It inhibits this key enzyme for DMT production. Um, and so this was... This peptide inhibitor of INMT, it was isolated, and we have a kind of a basic, broad, rough molecular mass of it, but that's it. 
they didn't do any further characterization. I mean, this was a long time ago, so it wasn't so easy then to do that kind of thing. But then the paper was basically forgotten about. It's been cited four times in 50 years, so it's gone. The, a couple of years later, there was one that found a similar peptide in human cerebrospinal fluid. That's been cited once in 50 years. Uh, so people basically forgot about this. Um, so I kind of uncovered this, stumbled across this paper and thought, well, let's, let's isolate this peptide. Let's actually characterize it. Let's determine its actual structure, its actual peptide sequence, how this peptide actually works, how it's integrated with other regulatory mechanisms in the human body. Um, then perhaps we can, once we understand how this peptide works and how the regulatory system for DNT works, then we've got an in for hacking this system. Yeah. Um, so we've actually recruited, I you know, say contracted. So myself and uh, New Nautics, um, this nonprofit out of Florida, who I've been working with for a number of years, um, we, we approached the University of Florida, uh, a very prominent uh, pharmacologist and peptide chemist uh, called uh, Chris McCurdy, um, and said, we'd like to isolate this peptide. We want to understand it, how it works. We want to understand how DMT is regulated in, in humans. And, uh, and we're basically, you know, he developed this research project with his team, a research plan, uh, and we are, this is happening. It's kind of being initiated now. Um, unfortunately, these things are expensive. Um, so we, we are still seeking people if they want to help fund this. I mean, it's like $400,000. So it's not pocket change for this initial stage of the project. So if anyone is interested, go to newnautics.org, N O O N A U T I C S.org, um, uh, and they can, they can help out. But we hope that, you know, by the end of you know, next year or something, we will understand a lot more about how DMT is regulated. In human so brain. what would be the ideal way in your mind to inhibit this inhibitor? It's a good question. So until we know, I mean, there's two broad possibilities when we isolate and characterize this, this peptide. One is it could be a known peptide, mm -hmm. right? So it's a peptide, there's many, many endogenous peptides, small, um, small, relatively small peptides, endorphins, for example, mm. right? These are peptides. Insulin, this is a peptide. Um, so if it's one we know, then that's good news in a way because we probably know about how the regulatory system works. Mm -hmm. So we might be able to, whether we inhibit that peptide directly and stop it working or whether we can get into the system and actually stop the, the peptide being produced, you know, temporarily um, so that it kind of frees up the INMT to begin churning out more DMT. That mm -hmm. would be one approach. Um, the alternative is that it's completely novel peptide that no one's seen before, that we don't know about. Right. That's interesting and good news for entirely different reasons because you've, you've you found something completely new, mm. uh, which would be really cool. But at the same time, we, we'd know basically nothing about it. So we wouldn't know how it's, how it, how it, plugs into other regulatory systems in the body uh, mm. and in the in the brain. Um, so that would maybe require more work to think about how do we Yeah, that's hack that that's system. interesting. If you could mm. hack that without having to take a drug, right? You would have to take a drug, wouldn't you? To to inhibit that? Well So it's like it's like just adding another step between Yeah, I mean the, there are a number of approaches you could yeah. take. I mean it could be that you you inject a small peptide that 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 might interact directly with this inhibitory peptide, right, right. Um, or it might inter it, it could even work at the genetic level where you're switching off the gene that produces this peptide. Yes, that could be much longer lasting, and this might last for days, weeks, or even months. I mean, this mm. is serious business. When Are you there think. legal uh, hoops you got to jump through to do something like this? Because well, it's like the funny thing about DMT, which Ter Mc Terrence McKenna points out, is everyone's carrying. Right? Everyone's carrying. So yeah. what if you have now like a different way to like hack your own body into creating a chemical that's already there. Exactly. Is right. that illegal? <laughs> exactly. And presumably not. Right. right. Um, so yes, you obviously you bypass all of the legal dif difficulties you have with injecting someone with the schedule one drug. Yeah. Um, that's gone and mm -hmm. you are simply manipulating using tools and it could be genetic. It could be molecular. Um, there are various possibilities. We don't, we don't, we don't know anything about this system yet, so we can't. We can just speculate on how we might work this and whether it would be a long-lasting effect. I mean, you might have to inject them with something, mm -hmm. but maybe once, 
and then it would last for days or weeks. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you'd have these individuals in a pod of some sort, all of their bodily needs would be taken care of. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, feeding and waste management, and they would basically spend significant portions of their their lives, ultimately, right? Um, interacting with, interfacing with, living amongst these intelligent beings from somewhere else. And they would forget, probably, that they were ever a human. I mean, that happens with DMT. I mean, we'll talk about your experiences, perhaps, but often with DMT, what happens, even with you know, in two or three minutes, you you will lose any conception of what it ever meant to be a human. And that, yeah. that part is gone. And you're, you're in that world now. You're a, a being, a conscious, intelligent being that exists within this other world. So you can imagine over days or weeks or months or whatever, um, si basically having an, an entirely new existence that would have, that would have been, in your own mind, that's that would be kind of all you've ever known, and so any conception of once having been a human would gone mm. is is gone, um, and you become the alien yeah. in a sense until you start until until you start to come back and then you kind of remember again and you integrate back into this reality. Yes, yes. <laughs>